I was born in the village of I grew up there and went to school. I ran there barefoot. But now, Kruki is the most contaminated village in Bielorussia. People's hair stand on end at the sight of it. The radiation is enormous there. And recently I visited that place again. I understood. I've lost my motherland for good and all. You understand. It's difficult to believe. You were living there. You remember everything. Now you have seen nothing and understand what you've lost. You've lost it for good. We can lose everything in that way. Not only Kruki village, not only Brezhne region, but the whole tent. civilization you must remember it. Oil, gas and uranium are ever decreasing and problems are ever increasing in number. And we want to live better and better. And we are not going to abandon electricity and television. There must be a new state. Our suggestion is to put in the train energetics into the outer state to close all mines and pit down, to bury all electric power stations, as there is no use of them in the, on the Earth. We don't need it on Earth. To the sky by will. By common will? Not so common at least because the diameter of it is 13,000 kilometers for this wheel to cover the equator. I'm sorry, you seem to be crazy. Sorry, but not me. It's him. It's a single launch of a rotor that's enough to put into space millions of tons. Is that he who's crazy? Yes, Anatoly Eduardovich Unitsky. He's an engineer from Gomel. By the way, about craziness, it was time when they thought him crazy, too. Fedor Polkowski, you mean? That's it. Each forestalling idea is considered to be delirium for the first time. But later it is taken as a matter of course. Great. Just look. What a power. Well, only 10,000 tons of cargo have been put into outer space for 30 years. Fantastic. Is it? But for the 30 years' time, the same 10,000 tons could be transported by a single horse, and the distance is the same, 300 kilometers. You're making everything too simple, and taking a rocket for an ordinary transport. Why should I see it otherwise? The days of romantic cosmonautics have passed away already. I've been called up to this reusable cosmic system as an expert. But now I see that all this is nonsense. It's immoral to send people into that very system. It's stupid. That's why I support this new project, which I consider to be the way out. It goes without saying that a lot of specialists here will find weak points in it. It's normal. 
It's only natural. It's just what can make ideas develop. But he agreed both. Enthusiasts and skeptics. And first, skeptics even more. As they make enthusiasts work. I will thank them for this. Let it be. You see, even a cosmonaut has supported Unitsky's project. Igor Wald, do you recognize him? Where is he making his speech? In Gomel, at the old Union Conference on Industrialization of the Outer Space Without Rockets. What does it mean, without rockets? Does it mean into the outer space without rockets? It's like a witch with a broom in the mortar. Oh no, the witch with a broom is just the principle of a rocket engine. And carpet plane, for instance, that is just another case. And it is something like anti-gravitational ship. All this out of reality. Yes, I agree. But here you are, a more realistic project of rocket transport, the cosmic lift. We can put a satellite into a geostatic orbit, then put a rope down from that place, fasten it to an ordinary lift cabin, and a cosmic transport is ready. But you can't possibly find a suitable road to bear the weight. But these are things of no importance, or in electromagnetic cannon. Do you remember, like Jules Verne's out of a cannon to the moon, it will fire the cargo out with the help of electromagnetic power. Was it a matter of discussion by the participants to the conference in Gamal? Yes, it was. Excuse me, but it sounds too much like Minhausen's tales. Minhausen was a poor physicist. You can't move mass tension. In the space, using inner forces only. I mean the law of preservation and movement of the mass tension. You can't do it. You see? You can't do it. Yes, but if the mass center is stationary, then it is possible. And this is the basic effect of the wheel principle. Just imagine an object which is falling through the Earth's center. And now you're talking about the flying saucer. A simple flying saucer which is on the way to the center of the Earth is under the effect of a gravitational force. What does this saucer do there in the Earth's center? It stops there in the weightlessness. And now in your mind, try to expand the saucer to the size exceeding that of the Earth. And leave only a rim. This rim will be hanging in the weightlessness, since its mass center will coincide with the mass center of the Earth. It's a wheel. Here you are. And that way, you mean, people will get a new cosmic transport means. By the way, don't forget the total planet. And is everything so very simple? Yes, everything is very simple. And still, I've got a lot of questions. You're smoking too much. Let's help and think. Well, my first question is, how will your flying saucer, or rim, or wheel, uh, be expanded? Here are realized the basic laws of the physics. Don't you remember? Well, not so good. Well, centrifugal force makes revolving balls move apart. The higher is the speed, the more they are moved apart. Once they revolve too fast, here in the center, the metal will break, as the strongest centrifugal force in the center of the system. As for the interior forces, the strongest ones are on the periphery, where the linear velocity is the highest. We can take away the center of it, as it is out of use for us, and we'll put the small balls into a ring tube, at least they should fly apart. In the tube, flows will revolve under the effect of the electromagnetic force. We'll create a vacuum in the tube in order to avoid air resistance. And we'll keep the small balls with the help of magnetic suspension. We'll construct the tube in a way making it possible to expand. We'll make it out of a telescopic compound. Under the effect of the centrifugal forces, the tube will become longer, wider, and finally it'll take off. Why is transport becoming transport? Why are automobiles moving? Because they are interacting with the road. It gives off a lot of dust, gas and so forth. All these causes are ecological problems. Why are planes flying? Because they are interacting with the environment. As a result, the destruction of the ozone lamp and so on, why are rockets flying? Because they are polluting the environment with burning products. Is it possible to fly with closed bottles? Or can we put the rocket into a sack? No, it's impossible. 
Why will anti-gravitational ship fly? I don't know its construction, and no one of you knows. But I know that it will interact with gravitational force, since it is an anti-gravitational ship. And the principal part of the gravitational field is gravitational mass. These are andrails. Anti-gravitational ship will influence the andrails of the Earth, and their consequences will be even more tremendous than in Lenin economy in Armenia. You see, air transport is connected with the environment, and that is why it is dangerous and closely connected with ecological problems. But if on the way into the outer space, the position of the mass center of the system doesn't change, we can use inner forces to go into the outer space. As we use inner forces of the system only, it'll be ecologically safe. As it won't throw into the environment neither energy nor chemical products. So it's a closed system. In order to widely develop the outer space, we are to erect their plants, factories and power stations first. So we are to deliver millions of tons of raw materials there. Here just above the overpass is the leading structure. And here we can see it in life size. The delivered cargo is packed into a tube, which is 100 millimeters in diameter. The tube is a rotor. All this is put into a vacuum town, which is above the overpass and covers the earth. The cargo is gaining speed in the channel up to 10 kilometers a second with the help of magnetic suspension and electric motor. And finally, it is let out into the atmosphere together with the vacuum cover. While expanding high speed, cargo now crosses the atmosphere and gets onto the desired orbit. Well, everything is all right here according to the school physics. But it's impossible in practice. Take, for example, an arrow pass around the equator. There isn't enough concrete on the entire Earth to make it. Ten million cubic meters of concrete have been put into the dam of the Anashushinsky electric power station. And it is just enough to build all these supports. Do you mean to say it's enough to take uh, the concrete of one single dam for the whole overpass? That's right. And I think you are interested in whether there will be enough metal. Well, there are 500 million automobiles in the world now. It's possible to build a wall with these automobiles, which will cover Ecuador, and it'll be 75 meters high. Is it clear with the metal? And what about energy? How much do we need it to take off and carry this wheel into the outer space with the million ton cargo? For example, Oringoi Ushgorod gas line from Siberia to Europe has 15 million kilowatts of power. Here, 15 million kilowatts of power can help to carry out millions of tons into the outer space. Modern cosmonautics would be able to carry out this quantity of load only in one and a half thousand years' time. And it'll be enough to build solar electric power station, 100 million kilowatts of power. This equals to 20 such electric power stations as Sayana Shushinska or 20 atomic electric power stations as Chernobyl. It'll be enough to send our road to 10 times only into the outer space to develop their energetics and even more powerful than modern one. What about your doubts? No doubt anymore? No, not all of them. All this is too great. There is nothing impossible here. The most interesting is, the bigger is the system, the easier are technical solutions which were to use for the realization of the plans. Многие из вас, наверное, знакомы с заявлениями, что наступила пора повзросления. You've probably heard people saying that more serious time had come, and all these dreams are naive, and we should abandon the idea of rapid industrialization and development of space. And there appeared conclusions that we have neither material nor technical resources to put this idea into life. Such tales can be realized only by future generations. Regarding the project of uniplanetary transport 
means. From a technical point of view, we can find out that our civilization has enough potential to turn our civilization into a cosmic one. This is a project which can be realized in the course of decades. And it'll give us intermediate results. The final aim is not yet achieved, but as long as intermediate results are achieved, we can work further. We can use it to bring up the young generation. Anybody can find his task here. The program is beautiful. It's only for one generation. But the fact is that there are not only ecological problems, but political ones. And our experience proves that it is easier to solve economical and technical problems than political ones. I think that industrial countries, as the USA and Japan, are closer to understanding of all these problems. For example, the USA spends 1,000 billion dollars for their towers. It is twice as much as the cost of our project. Strategic defensive initiative is a highly scientific problem. Even in case it will not be realized, they'll receive a great number of answers to different questions. As far as a lot of intellectuals, experts, are working on the project. And all this will be paid off immediately. But the final result of the Star Wars will not yield good. Say, X-ray laser, which will be on the orbit, is in vain. Or an interceptor. This 100 billion is dead. And the system is even more scientific than Star Wars project. And it will meet young and talented people, so that to put it into national economy. Today rather than in future. Должны все это разработать, и все это пойдет на родное хозяйство сегодня, а не завтра в светлом будущем. Разумнее было бы сейчас действительно искать it will be more useful now to understand military-industrial complex, its economical interests, as long as it receives really big incomes. Let's imagine that McDonald's firm, which produces planes and rockets, or Boeing company invests all their industrial potential to the Unitskis project. Any American firm can direct its work on electromagnetic suspension. Or, for example, Bessel firm, a military one, building aerodromes, it can receive incomes through building the overpass. So as you see, practically everything is feasible. But who will do that? Well, there is some logic in it, of course, but... Um, but what? But there is also politics besides logics. Well, politics in future will be determined by a new mentality. The situation in the world is as follows. Soon the production of weapons will be even greater shame for any worker, scientific, researcher or designer. On the other hand, the situation in the world put on the agenda the problem of the surviving of mankind. Let's think of the big bourgeois. There are rather strong in political and economical questions. And they are also thinking about this, as they are living beings, and they have families, and they are expecting babies. That, uh, that means that just we, we as history, to think, I would in, hope so. to think in terms of joint effort, mm -hmm. whenever we speak about the mission which is as large as the mission for civilization, or yes. as large as next step in revolutionary development of technology. Sir, yes. You mentioned, uh, and uh, uh, this is obviously... Uh, case where there must be a decision made that is desirable yes. and then where do you get the uh, funds and yes, uh, uh, how uh, do you share yes. the knowledge and back as long ago as 37 years ago 
I helped organize the International Astronautical Federation, and its concept is, from the beginning, cooperation and sharing of, of uh, the problems and the potential of space flight. And there are many projects today, even, say, a flight to Mars, that are too big for one country. Yes. And I, I have always been in favor of cooperation. Yes. <laughs> This is the morning of a new stage in our civilization. And this new epoch is starting here in Gomo. You shouldn't say that. Why is Gomo worse than Kaluga? And here's the author of the project, Anatoly Unitsky. Confidently making his way to his office star world by name. <laughs> Well, perhaps this very building will become a historical one. And has awaited for that very moment since 1849. But very few people can guess that the future of the entire world is planned here. I knew much more about that very future. It's impossible to have a walk in the town in autumn. Everything is dug up because of the pipe, which has rusted. It's taken out of the ground to become rust in another five years. And again, it'll be taken out, an endless process. But if we receive our steel in the outer space, we can put our pipe into the ground for thousands of years. Cosmic steel will have qualities ten times better than the earthen one, and it'll give us the opportunity to melt not 150 million tons of steel, but 15, and it'll be enough. Up till now, all technologies were destructive. Even if they were constructed, they destroyed environment. This conception is the first one, saving environment and solving ecological problems. Not only plants will be carried out into the outer space, there is one more aspect. While putting the system into the orbit, we can use liquid oxygen as a ballast, and it can be thrown down into the upper layers of the atmosphere. It means that it will help to rehabilitate the ozone layer. It is the history-first ecogenic system. But you must understand, the main thing is that it'll give us an opportunity to build the plants on the orbit and to carry all technologies out of our home, I mean the Earth, into the outer space. There will be raw materials and pure solar energy. And are you going to carry out into the outer space everything in that way? Yes, everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what will be left behind on Earth in that case? Very much. Fresh air clean meadows and pastures, clean rivers and seas. In fact, we are thieves with you, you know. We are living on the account of our future generation. We are robbing them, taking things which don't belong to us, who have just taken a lot as it is. 
May quote, in the book of the Institute of the World Watch, which is solving global problems, one can read, we have not inherited our earth from our ancestors, we are borrowing it from our descendants. You see, that's the problem. And how can we return our debts? Why do you keep silence? Well, you know, this very project... What is it? Is it impossible? Uh, well, I don't mean that. But simply... What? Is it too great? Frankly speaking, yes. Though... What is it, though? Well, it must be thought over in the end. Thought over? Yes, it must be thought over. Just think. <laughs>